Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. And, uh, the Australian Defence Force Superannuation Bill is important legislation. It's uh, timely uh, legislation. It was introduced on uh, 25 June 2015, and what it does, it provides new, modern, and flexible superannuation arrangements for people uh, joining the Australian Defence Force on and after 1 July 2016. The, uh, uh, this military superannuation scheme, this new scheme, will be a fully funded accumulation scheme. The current military superannuation and benefit scheme, MSBS, will be closed to new members from 1 July 2016. Uh, speaker, importantly, current serving contributing MSBS members will uh, not be compelled to move to ADF Super, although they may choose to do so. Uh, for the the very first time, ADF members will be able to join the superannuation fund of their choice. Uh, a default military superannuation scheme will also be established, as is required under law. Our uh, Royal Australian Navy, Australian Army and uh, Royal Australian Air Force uh, men and women have a unique and remarkable role, both at home and abroad. That's recognised by uh, everyone who sits in this place. In recognition of this unique role, ADF super members will receive a generous employer contribution rate of 16.4 per cent, regardless of the superannuation fund they choose. Uh, and I say generous, but uh, it's also appropriate, Deputy Speaker. It's also wholly appropriate. Uh, this rate is higher than that offered to Australian public servants, 15.4 uh, per cent, and significantly higher than the 9.5 per cent available to the majority of Australians through the superannuation guarantee. But uh, I think we all recognise that uh, I know that we all recognise that uh, ADF members have a very unique and special role. They place their lives uh, on the line, uh, many of them each and every day when they go out to do their duty. Uh, and in fact, all of them at some stage or another indeed do just that. Uh, there will be no requirement for ADF super members to uh, make employee contributions to their superannuation. Uh, as a result, serving, contributing, MSBS members who currently contribute a minimum 5 per cent of their salary who choose to become ADF super members will immediately receive a 5 per cent increase to their take-home pay. ADF super fixes one of the long-running grievances of the veteran and ex-service community, namely the lack of flexibility and portability of a member's superannuation benefit. Accompanying legislation was also introduced to establish ADF cover, the Australian Defence Force Cover Bill 2015. ADF cover is a new scheme which will continue to provide members of the ADF with death and invalidity cover. The government recognises that the nature of military service makes it extremely difficult for ADF members to obtain death and invalidity cover at a reasonable cost. ADF cover addresses this issue by ensuring that all ADF personnel who are members of ADF super have full death and invalidity cover. ADF cover provides the same level of death and invalidity cover as is provided to members of the current MS MSBS. ADF cover will apply regardless of the superannuation fund chosen by the ADF member. ADF members will not be required to make any contributions to ADF cover and all benefits paid under ADF cover will be met from consolidated revenue. ADF cover will provide benefits for ADF members who are medically discharged and whose capacity to undertake civilian employment is limited as a result of medical condition which occurs while serving in the ADF. And that's important, Deputy Speaker, because uh, uh, many uh, people who serve and uh, who wear, proudly wear the, the uniform uh, do find it difficult when they transition uh, back into civilian life, and uh, none more so if, uh, if they have a medical condition uh, caused uh, by that service. Uh, on behalf of the people of this nation, on behalf of the nation, and uh, it is difficult for them enough to uh, to be able to uh, fit back into normal civilian life, but uh, to be able to do it with that financial uh, security is is just so vitally important. If an ADF member dies in service, or if an uh, invalid dies while whilst receiving an invalidity pension. Uh, benefits that uh, will be paid to the dependents of that member or invalid or to their estate. Uh, Defence Legislation uh, Amendment Bill and Superannuation ADF cover, uh, cover Bill 2015 Flexible Service is, as I say, very, very important uh, legislation in this place. 
accompanying the introduction of ADF Super and ADF Cover is uh, legislation which provides for significantly more flexible service for permanent ADF members. The government has introduced groundbreaking reforms that for the first time will enable ADF members to seek uh, part-time work subject to defence capability requirements, and that's an important uh, distinction, subject to uh, defence capability requirements. I mean, if they are wearing the uniform, we want them to uh, put that obviously first and foremost, as all ADF personnel do, but, uh, but as I say, these are groundbreaking reforms. These significant reforms will improve the ADF as ADF's uh, workforce model uh, and will provide additional flexibility for members of the military. And we need to understand that, uh, that the world is a changing place and that, uh, that we do need to be able to provide flexibility uh, for our defence people who give up a lot, who sacrifice a lot to, uh, to wear the uniform. And you and I uh, are well aware of that, uh, Deputy Speaker, having uh, uh, done a number of the uh, Australian Defence Force parliamentary programs together. And, uh, and certainly I know uh, I certainly I know that, uh, that uh, you and I have seen firsthand, as I know the member for Morton uh, has, um, in, in the various uh, capacities that he has uh, undertaken in his parliamentary uh, career. Um, you know, and, and when you go and have a look at uh, when you go on the basis and you have a, an in-depth look at what those people do, uh, it, it never uh, ever ceases to amaze me the commitment, the extraordinary ability and talent that they uh, that they that they put into their work each and every day, and they have to because uh, uh, their lives and those of, of many many others are very much in their hands. Um, this legislation uh, will also will also improve the ADF's employment offer, leading to improved recruitment and retention of personnel, and, th and that's important too, uh, because retention of personnel is something that uh, uh, that. Uh, Defence uh, needs to be able to uh, to ensure to be able to um, ensure that they have good working conditions, uh, to be able to have that good uh, superannuation security, and uh, and and so to make uh, defence uh, a place that uh, that people want to go and, and take a career up in. And I'm I'm so pleased that uh, uh, I was actually able to take part in a review of the um, the uh, gap year. Uh, gap year program that, uh, that the coalition government introduced uh, to see so many of those young people who uh, who might otherwise uh, have either uh, done other things for the the gap year after year 12 or or indeed uh, uh, perhaps uh, not chosen to participate too much at all and uh, the experiences that they had both at uh, uh, Royal Australian Air Force Forest Hill at Wagga Wagga uh, and the Army Recruit Training Centre at Kapuka, the home of the soldier, uh, will. Uh, provide uh, advantages for life to those young people, no matter what they uh, choose to do uh, in their lives. Uh, Defence is a modern, flexible and responsive employer. And, uh, and I, I say that word responsive because uh, and, and, uh, uh, I know the great work that uh, uh, the, the Kapuka Commandants do at Wagga Wagga. Uh, theirs is one of the most difficult jobs uh, in the nation. We, 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 we think here that we uh, that we have an important job to um, you know to, to to govern the country and to uh, and in, in your case, Deputy Speaker, and uh, the member for Morton's case, to uh, you know to keep the government accountable. But the uh, but the Kapuka Commandant has the job of making sure that the, all the recruits who who, uh, who who don't go to Duntroon, they they're not officers, they're the young recruits, and some not so young who go through Kapuka, they are the future of the army. They are the future of that long line of Kharki, which has served us steadfastly and proudly and staunchly since uh, 25 April 1915, even a little bit before that. But um, but uh, Colonel Stephen Jobson is doing a fantastic job, and he follows. A long line of uh, of wonderful people who have uh, who have held that job. One of the most, I believe, important in this nation. And uh, and I I uh, I'm digressing a little bit from the, the superannuation legislation before us. But what that uh, commandant has done to ensure that uh, that uh, bullying is no longer a part of uh, of any military establishment that certainly he runs, but uh, certainly the uh, the Kapuka Army Base. Uh, to ensure that uh, you know the respect for women uh, is is first and foremost front and centre of of anything that that base does uh, is to be commended and uh, and I know that he is uh, uh, headed for for much bigger things in his future military career and I hope that certainly is because uh, the sorts of uh, things that he he has uh, uh, improved upon from previous commandants is to be admired and. Uh, 
And uh, you know, uh, whilst I'm speaking of that, the former member for Bass was a uh, was indeed a, a Kapuka commandant, and as I say, it's one of the most difficult jobs and uh, most demanding jobs and challenging jobs uh, in the nation. But they have all done a very, very fine job. But getting back onto this legislation, uh, the the uh, the government is steadfastly committed to supporting ADF personnel, and these reforms will help bolster defence's capability. Uh, importantly, these reforms will improve conditions of service for members of the ADF, and we do want to make it attractive. We must make it attractive for people to want to be able to serve our nation, uh, because, as we all know, there are, there are challenges which lie ahead, and uh, we are going to need the very best and brightest people uh, wearing our military uniforms. The closure of MSBS and establishment of ADF Super were announced uh, as part of the budget. These changes will reduce the government's unfunded liabilities by about $100 billion by 2050. Uh, it's important to note uh, that this is not a savings measure. ADF Super has a forecast total cash cost of $433 million over the uh, forward estimates to 2018-19 and $3.196 billion uh, over the decade. ADF Super will be a new, modern and flexible superannuation arrangement for people joining the ADF on and after 1 July 2016. Um, members will enjoy, uh, sorry, I should say receive a generous employer contribution rate of 16.4 per cent, but as I said, uh, not so much generous but appropriate. Uh, ADF Super fixes the long-running issues of inflexibility and portability of a member's superannuation benefit. That's vitally important. ADF is a uh, ADF covers a new scheme which will provide uh, members of the ADF with death and invalidity cover uh, given they are unlikely to be able to source this cover at a reasonable price given the very, very unique nature and dangerous nature of their work. Uh, flexible service is a groundbreaking reform which adds flexibility to the ADF's workforce model. Flexible service will allow ADF members, where possible, to serve part-time. This new flexibility arrangement will vastly improve the ADF service offer, which will improve recruitment and retention. And, uh, as the member for Riverina, I want to see more people going through Kapuka. I want to see the government committing to making sure that some of those gap year students, uh, or they're not students anymore, but uh, those gap year uh, young people and those, uh, those people who uh, want to join the ADF at whatever age, uh, are able to be able to have that security of superannuation guarantee. The uh, government has worked with stakeholders such as the RSL, the Defence Force Welfare Association and the Australian Defence Association in developing these policies. All major stakeholders support these important reforms and I'm encouraged to hear that the Australian Labor Party will also vote to support these bills and I thank them for that bipartisan commitment. The Abbott government is steadfastly committed to supporting ADF personnel and these reforms will help bolster defence's capability and, importantly, these reforms will improve conditions of service for members of the Australian Defence Force. Thank you, Deputy.